Hello everyone, I am Dr. Drupti and this is my YouTube channel Enjoy Biochemistry. If you find the content on this channel useful, please like, share and subscribe. In the video lecture series on thyroid gland, in this part 3, we are going to learn about disorders of thyroid gland and at the end of this session, students shall be able to describe the causes, clinical features and their biochemical or physiological basis, diagnosis and treatment of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Disorders of thyroid gland are hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, there is increased synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland and it is characterized by increased serum level of both T3 and T4 and also there is decreased TSH level. In hypothyroidism, there is low production of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland and in the serum, there will be low T3 and T4 and TSH level will be increased. The synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland, it is regulated by hypothalamo-pituitary thyroid axis. The paraventricular nuclei of hypothalamus releases thyroid, thyrotropin releasing hormone and this TRH activates thyrotropes of anterior pituitary to secrete TSH that is thyroid stimulating hormone. This thyroid stimulating hormone activates thyroid gland to synthesize and secrete T3 and T4. So whenever there is increased T3 and T4 level by negative feedback mechanism, it inhibits the secretion of TSH from anterior pituitary as well as TRH from hypothalamus. Now, when the thyroid gland is directly affected, it results in the primary disorders of thyroid gland. So when thyroid gland is affected, in case of hyperthyroidism, it is called as primary hyperthyroidism and in case of hypothyroidism, it is called as primary hypothyroidism. If the pituitary gland is affected, it results in the secondary disorder of thyroid gland and if hypothalamus is affected, then it is the tertiary disorder. Now this term hyperthyroidism, it is different from the term thyrotoxicosis. In hyperthyroidism, there is increased synthesis as well as secretion of thyroid hormones but this thyrotoxicosis there is increased thyroid hormone levels which can be without the increased thyroid hormone synthesis so it is with or without the increased thyroid hormone synthesis so this is the basic difference between hyperthyroidism and thyrotoxicosis what are the various causes of hyperthyroidism Primary hyperthyroidism is the result of dysfunction of thyroid gland. Here the pathology is in the thyroid gland and the most common cause is Graves disease which is the autoimmune disease. Other causes are toxic multinodular goiter, toxic adenoma, thyroid carcinoma or due to iodine excess. Iodine excess results in hyperthyroidism and this is called as jord based phenomena. And this primary hyperthyroidism, it is characterized by increase in T4 as well as increase in T3 level. And as there is increased T4 and T3, it will inhibit anterior pituitary to release TSH. So, because of this ne negative feedback mechanism, whenever there is increased T4 and T3 in primary hyperthyroidism, the TSH level will be low. So, this primary hyperthyroidism is characterized by increased T3 and T4 and decrease in TSH. Now secondary hyperthyroidism. What are the causes? The first one is TSH secreting pituitary adenoma, thyroid hormone resistance syndrome. Whenever excess thyroid hormones are administered to the patient, it leads to secondary hyperthyroidism or in case of choriocarcinoma and ectopic thyroid tumor. So these are the causes of secondary hyperthyroidism and in this condition, there will be increase in both T3 and T4 but TSH will also increase. So here the negative feedback mechanism is not operative and in this condition increase in T3 and T4 is associated with increased TSH also because the pathology is itself in the pituitary gland. The third is hypothalamic which is called as tertiary hyperthyroidism. It results from increase in the TRH level. The thyrotoxicosis can also result without the hyperthyroidism and the causes are subacute thyroiditis which can be caused due to virus or bacteria or the postpartum thyroiditis. Graves disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. 
it is the autoimmune disorder where auto antibodies are formed against tsh receptor these are called as anti tsh receptor on antibodies these antibodies activate tsh receptor and it leads to increase synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones these are thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins which is also called as tsi so there is increase thyroid hormone and decrease tsh tsh seen in the graves disease that is hyperthyroidism and this graves disease it is characterized by thyrotoxicosis diffusely enlarged hyperfunctioning thyroid so there is increased production of thyroid hormone and it presents with all the clinical manifestations due to increased thyroid hormone these auto antibodies which are anti tsh receptor antibody they not only target the tsh receptor on the follicular cell but also targets skin fibroblast and infiltrating auto reactive t cells and the fibroblast between extra orbital muscles and it results in the inflammation and increased secretion of hyaluronic acid that's why the graves disease is also characterized by ophthalmopathy and there is formation of exophthalmos in 40% of the patient and this exophthalmos occurs due to swelling of extra ocular muscles and proliferation of connective tissue within the bony wall of orbit which pushes the eyeball forward and it is called as proptosis so this is the important condition of graves disease it is it occurs because of anti thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies that is anti tsh receptor antibodies targeting the fibroblast present in between the extra orbital muscle which results in the inflammation and increased production of hyaluronic acid the third important manifestation is pre tibial myxedema so there is localized infiltrative dermatopathy as these antibodies target skin fibroblast also so there is increased synthesis of mucin and various glycosaminoglycans and it results in the localized dermatopathy which is the specific feature of graves disease it is called as pre tibial myxedema so these are the important clinical manifestations of grave disease that is thyrotoxicosis ophthalmopathy pre tibial myxedema now let's see the clinical features of hyperthyroidism and these clinical features are based on the effects of thyroid hormones on various organs of the body and the effects have been already explained in the previous video so the first important feature of hyperthyroidism is thyroid swelling so hyperthyroidism is characterized by goiter then as thyroid hormone increase the heart rate which is called as tachycardia so hyperthyroidism is associated with the tachycardia as well as there is increased systolic blood pressure so it is associated with hypertension now thyroid hormones affect sympathetic nervous system and there is over excitation of sympathetic nervous system because of excess thyroid hormones it leads to anxiety irritability insomnia in patients of hyperthyroidism now overall cell metabolism rate is increased in in uh, hyperthyroidism because thyroid hormone increases the basal metabolism so as basal metabolism is increased there is increase increase glycolysis increase lipolysis increase glycogenolysis so there will be weight loss bmr is increased so there will be increased heat production body temperature will be more and as there is more body temperature there will be more thirst and there is intolerance to heat so these are the characteristic features of hyperthyroidism weight loss intolerance to heat then comes sweating so because of the blood vessel dilatation which supply the skin there will be more sweating there is increase uh, production of sweat from the eccrine glands and there will be facial flushing in case of hyperthyroidism and it it results due to increase in the heat then the thyroid hormone balances the met, uh, the bone functions so if there is increased thyroid it leads to osteoporosis it increases the motility of git tract so increased motility by increased thyroid hormone will lead to diarrhea and there will be increased appetite as thyroid hormones will increase appetite so the hyperthyroidism condition is characterized by weight loss in spite of increased appetite thyroid hormones also affect reproductive system 
so in women the clinical features will be oligomenorrhea amenorrhea there can be loss of libido and gynecomastia in case of males thyroid hormones also affect muscles so increased thyroid function leads to muscle weakness myopathy and there will be also fine tremors and increased thyroid hormone also affect the eyes and it results in the protrusion of eyeball with retracted lid a wide staring gaze and lid lag these are the presentation because of sympathetic over stimulation of superior tarsal muscle which function alongside the levator palpebri superioris muscle to raise the upper eyelid but the full blown thyroid ophthalmopathy associated with proptosis it is the feature seen only in the graves disease so exophthalmos it is the feature of grave disease and this protrusion of eyeball with retracted lid it, it can be present in the hyperthyroidism in uh, in association with that periorbital edema is also present so these are the various clinical features of hyperthyroidism which can be correlated with the functions of thyroid hormone so whenever there is increased thyroid hormone level there will be increase in the impact or effect of these hormones on various organs of the body leading to this clinical features if a patient presents with the clinical features of hyperthyroidism then the diagnosis is based on the estimation of uh, t3 t4 and tsh but most commonly free t4 and tsh are estimated now what are the possibilities of result so if there is increase in the t4 level and decrease in the tsh it is the primary hyperthyroidism so the there can be various causes of this primary hyperthyroidism and most common cause is graves disease it can be due to toxic multinodular goiter or toxic adenoma or thyroid carcinoma but the most common is graves disease now to find out the etiology we have to do anti tsh receptor antibodies because these antibodies are present in condition of graves disease so if this antibodies are positive then graves disease is confirmed and if negative then go for thyroid uptake scan which will help to differentiate between toxic multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma now what happens if the clinic if the laboratory picture is like this that t4 level is normal and tsh is decrease so this is called as subclinical hyperthyroidism and in this condition go for estimation of free t3 level and if it is increase it is the t3 thyrotoxicosis the third possibility is both increase in t4 level as well as tsh level and it is due to secondary hyperthyroidism and the causes can be tss secreting pituitary adenoma thyroid hormone resistance syndrome or choriocarcinoma rarely so these are the various possibilities which can be uh, evaluated on the basis of result that we get after doing thyroid function test and this is how this is the algorithm for diagnosis of hyperthyroidism coming to the treatment of hyperthyroidism and it includes the administration of thionamides the examples of propyl thioracil methamazole non specific beta blocker like propranolol given and most commonly the treatment options are these three only propyl thioracil methamazole and propranolol the other options are administration of anions like perchlorate pertechnate periiodide etc then high dose of iodide it also can be given for the treatment of hyperthyroidism and it is called as wolf check off effect which is op opposite of jord besdor effect uh, wherein high dose of iodine can lead to hyperthyroidism and here the high dose of iodide is given to reduce the hyperthyroidism then comes radio iodine so these are the various treatment options available for treatment of hyperthyroidism what is the mechanism of action of thionamides this propyl thioracil and methamazole they inhibit the function of thyroid peroxidase they inhibit oxidation and organification of iodide decrease the level of thyroid stimulating antibodies and specifically this propyl thioracil it decreases the rate of conversion of t4 to t3 by inhibiting d2 d iodinase and that's how they are used in the treatment of hyperthyroidism and what is the mechanism of action of propranolol it is the 
non specific beta blocker and it inhibits the conversion of t4 into t3 the anions they compete with iodide for transport via sodium iodide as importer and thus they prevent iodide trapping this high dose of iodide it inhibits the effect of tsh on the thyroid gland decrease cyclic amp production as well as it inhibits the proteolysis of thyroglobulin the most direct treatment of hyperthyroidism is surgical removal of most of the thyroid gland so these are the various treatment modalities available for hyperthyroidism now coming to the second disorder of thyroid gland that is hypothyroidism and let's see the various causes of hypothyroidism first primary hypothyroidism the most common cause is iodine deficiency then hashimoto's thyroiditis which is autoimmune condition it can also result post surgery radio iodine therapy or external irradiation various drugs can also cause primary hypothyroidism that is lithium iodides para amino salicylic acid and congenital hypothyroidism the laboratory pictures will be there will be decrease in the t3 and t4 level and tsh level is increased so hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism is characterized by decrease in the thyroid hormones and increase in tsh level secondary hypothyroidism is also called as central hypothyroidism because it involves the pituitary as well as hypothalamus and the causes are pituitary resection pituitary tumors and any brain injury involving hypothalamus and it can also result due to thyroid hormone resistance so these are the various causes of hypothyroidism coming to the clinical manifestations or clinical features of hypothyroidism which are mostly opposite that of the clinical features of hyperthyroidism so this hypothyroidism it is characterized by decrease in the heart rate unlike the increase in heart rate occurs that occurs in hyperthyroidism so hypothyroidism is characterized by bradycardia but there is hypertension most commonly diastolic hypertension occurs in hypothyroidism then the depression of sympathetic nervous system because thyroid hormones activate sympathetic nervous system but here it is in it is depressed and it results in the generalized fatigue apathy and mental sluggishness overall cell metabolism is decreased because of a decrease in the thyroid hormones so there will be decreased lipolysis decrease glycogenolysis and it results in the weight gain body temperature bmr will be decreased and there will be intolerance to cold so it is unlike the intolerance to heat in case of hyperthyroidism in hypothyroidism there will be intolerance to cold and there will be weight gain then the skin will be dry cool and pale and there will be hair loss alopecia osteoporosis is the result of hypothyroidism like hyperthyroidism because thyroid hormone maintains the function of osteoblast and osteoclast so any increase or decrease will result in the osteoporosis then th as thyroid hormones increase the appetite the lack of thyroid hormones will uh, lead to decrease in the appetite and it increases the gi motility so decreased level of thyroid hormone will lead to constipation it is unlike the diarrhea which occurs in hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism it, it is characterized by constipation reproductive system is affected in female it results in the polymenorrhea and in case of hypothyroidism the face is puffy there is swelling on hands and feet and it is called as myxedema the voice becomes thick and husky and it is because of the accumulation of matrix substances such as glycosaminoglycans hyaluronic acid in the skin subcutaneous tissue and viscera and this results in the non pitting edema broadening and coarsening of fa facial features and enlargement of the tongue and deepening of the voice and because of this the hypothyroid patient has puffy face hands and feet and thick and husky voice in addition to these clinical features the reaction time of tendon reflexes is decreased hypothyroidism is also associated with carpal tunnel syndrome periorbital edema and cholesterol level is increased in case of hypothyroidism hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most important cause of hypothyroidism it is the chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis 
it is the chronic form of autoimmune thyroid where antibodies are formed against the thyroglobulin and the enzyme thyroid peroxidase so in patients of hashimoto's thyroiditis anti thyroid peroxidase antibodies and anti thyroglobulin antibodies are present and in this condition thyroid cells are damaged which, which leads to hypothyroidism hypothyroidism in children results in the condition called as creatinism and various causes of creatinism are maternal iodine deficiency during pregnancy mild development of thyroid gland during the fetal life if there is inborn error of thyroid hormone synthesis or anti thyroid antibodies if they are present in the mother and hypopituitarism in the fetal life so all these are the causes of hypothyroidism in children which results in creatinism what are the clinical features of the creatinism the clinical features are there is impaired development of skeletal system and also the central nervous system there will be severe mental retardation short stature coarse facial features protruding tongue umbilical hernia so these are the various clinical features seen in patients of creatinism severe hypothyroidism in adults result in the condition called as myxedema in myxedema there is increased deposition of gas hyaluronic acid chondroitin sulfate and other mucopolysaccharides in the dermis which results in the swelling of skin this protein mucopolysaccharide complex bind water and it results in the non pitting edema around the eyes hands and feet there is thickening of tongue laryngeal and pharyngeal mucous membrane results in the husky and thick voice so the speech becomes thick slurred and it results in the hoarseness so the skin of the patient is dry puffy dull there will be periorbital edema and the hairs are dry and coarse so these are the features of myxedema there is one more term pre tibial myxedema but it is present in the graves disease if the patient presents with clinical features of hypothyroidism then the diagnosis is based on evaluation of free t4 and tsh level what are the different possibilities the first one is decrease free t4 as this is hypothyroidism t4 if t4 is decreased and tsh is increased it is the primary hypothyroidism and the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is hashimoto's thyroiditis so to find out the cause estimate anti tpo antibodies that is thyroid peroxidase antibodies and if they are positive it is hashimoto's thyroiditis and if it is negative we have to rule out the other causes of primary hypothyroidism if there is increased tsh and free t4 level is normal then it is subclinical or mild hypothyroidism if both tsh and free t4 levels are decreased then it is secondary or central hypothyroidism and the anterior pituitary functions have to be evaluated what is goiter goiter is greatly enlarged thyroid gland it occurs due to failure in the regulation of t3 t4 synthesis so whenever there is increased tsh it stimulates thyroid gland to secrete more hormones and it leads to enlargement of the gland to compensate the decreased synthesis of hormones it occur due to either deficiency or excess of iodine level what are goitrogens goitrogens are the substances which decrease the production of thyroid hormones for example thiourea thiouracil thiocyanates nitrates perchlorates these are the goitrogens and cabbage cauliflower turnips they contain thiocyanates so they are also called as goitrogens there is one more condition u thyroid 6 syndrome so it is also called as non thyroidal illness this is the abnormal finding of thyroid function test without pre existing hypothalamic pituitary thyroid gland dysfunction and after the recovery thyroid function test becomes normal and this is characterized by low t3 level and this occurs in conditions of starvation sepsis surgery myocardial infarction bypass surgery bone marrow transplantation or any severe illness results in u thyroid 6 syndrome but after the recovery of condition the thyroid function test becomes normal and it is called as non thyroidal illness 
there are two more important terms related to disorders of thyroid gland and those are thyroid storm and myxedema coma so what is this thyroid storm it is also called as thyrotoxic crisis it is the acute life threatening complication of hyperthyroidism in which the exaggerated presentation of thyrotoxicosis is present there and it result in the sudden multi system involvement and it is the result of various precipitating factors like in patient of hyperthyroidism if there is abrupt discontinuation of anti thyroid drug or if there is any thyroid surgery trauma acute illness like various infections like covid 19 diabetic ketoacidosis heart failure acute myocardial infarction if any drug reaction so all these precipitating factors can result in the thyrotoxic crisis in patients of hyperthyroidism and this is called as thyroid storm now myxedema coma it is the rare life threatening clinical condition in patients with long standing severe untreated hypothyroidism it is a form of severe decompensated hypothyroidism and it also results from a pre by precipitating factors and it is uh, it is characterized by altered mental status defective thermoregulation that is hypothermia and there is presence of precipitating events like surgery trauma or any acute illness so in today's video we have learned various disorders of thyroid gland their causes clinical features biochemical basis diagnosis and management in brief about various thyroid disorders in the next video we will see the various thyroid function test along with the clinical case discussion so thank you for watching and happy learning